right, so the first one. Okay, so hopefully this didn't cause too many issues. Um, the sine squared and the cosine squared is going to be a, uh, a giveaway here that that's going to be 1. So it's cos 2x. Now I can put in, uh, to either side. So I'm just going to add sine squared x to both sides. And then we got sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 3 uh, cosine x. Now this and this together is 1, so it's a norm. Uh, yeah. So cosine x equals 1 plus 3 uh, cosine x. Okay, so at this stage, I've not set this uh, double here. I don't, I want it as a single, so there are all the singles, so I'm going to use the identity uh, 2 cos squared x uh, minus 1 equals 1 plus 3 cos x. And then I'm going to bring everything to one side and solve it like a quadratic. So I think you end up with 2 cos squared x minus 3 cos x minus 2 equals 0. And then we set up our quadratic, so you treat that like it is just a single variable then. But it's uh, so 2 cos x in the first bracket, cos x in the second bracket. Perhaps um, 2 and 1, I think. So 2 times 1, you get 2. I think this is a minus, and that's a plus. So that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be minus 4. Okay. All right, I'm just going to continue it up here. Uh, so that means uh, 2 cos x plus 1 equals 0, and cos x minus 2 equals 0. Well, this is not looking promising because of course that won't be possible all right so you would have had to rule that out and then cos x then equals minus a half from this one so this is the one we can continue with to find the actual angles and where cos is negative a half would be in the second and third quadrants I think so and our reference angle then would be pi over 3 I think so, what's it in this quadrant? It'll be 2 pi over 3. And what is it in this quadrant? It's going to be 4 pi over 3, I think. And that's our two values for x. Okay, so... Uh, see that like you got that nice. And... I uh, messed up the uh, x is negative a half. Doesn't equal cos pi over 4, you said. And what's this? Pi gel. Oh, you cancelled the ones, Rigel. I think your signs are off. You had 1 plus 1 minus. Did I do good? Sorry, Malika. Did I do good? Did you do good? You got that question fully correct. Yes. <laughs> okay. Question one is right anyway. All right, let's look at uh, question two, which hopefully was a, a bit of a gimme. Um, the length of the minor arc AB, so that's, they want uh, this length here on the outside. Uh, you want that so you're going to use the length is equal to theta times or with you're already given it in radians so this is going to be 2.2 times 10 which is 22. Okay. presume we all got that i'll check in a second and then the area of the perimeter or the sorry the, not the area of the perimeter that perimeter is going to include these two lengths so that's just adding 20 to that so that the part so this is 22 plus your 20, and that gives 42. So let's give some some units here. Uh, that was in centimeters. So that's centimeters, and this is also centimeters. Okay, so that's the easiest four marks you might ever get. And then uh, for the area, then it's going to be a half uh, uh, theta 2.2 times um, 10 squared. Okay, and you can that's going to be 100. So that's 220. 
take away, or divide it by two, so it's 110 centimeters squared. All right, now I'd be surprised if anyone uh, didn't get that right. You got it all correct. All the die calculation error. Didn't get the last part. Um, I like uh, well, no units, but I think the mark scheme will let you away with no units. So I'm like, you got that right. Boom. All right, so let's move on to question three. Expand and simplify this, which was okay. So the first part, just expanding and simplifying that should be uh, pretty straightforward. So it by itself. Uh, that's going to be one. First times first, so one plus, and then you're thinking of two root threes, and then you have a root th three squared, which is just three. So you get four plus two root three. So that's not a particularly tricky first mark. Part B then, by writing 75. So we had a very similar question to this in the in those practice questions. So this should have been a gimme as well. By writing 75 as 30 plus 45, find the value of cos 75. So you would start off with, so the cos of 30 plus 45 is the same as cos 70. So you use your identity, cos 1. So it's cos 30, cos... 5 minus sine 30 sine 45. That's from our formula booklet. I didn't see. Uh, yeah. Is there a digital copy of the test that I can look at while you're doing this? Uh, sure. Let me just put that on the manage back for you right now so you can do that. I'll put it in uh, the calendar for today. Thank you, sir. So that's if you want to watch it go along. It's in, it's a Word document, but it's in uh, Manage Back for today's calendar. You should find it there now if you refresh. All right, so, so each of these then has their corresponding, so uh, known ratios. That's root three over two. Uh, that is root two over two. And that is uh, half, isn't it? Yeah. Is I think root two over two as well. All right, so this is working out quite nicely. They're going to be over four, so that's going to be root six over four minus root two over four. Is there a form they wanted in? No, you can do that, or you leave it like that, or you can combine it. It's a non-calculator, so you're not going to be able to. So you could perhaps combine it into one fraction. What is that? Okay, and that's three marks. And then part C, uh, find A, B, so this length here, in the form um, a, a plus root B. Okay, so we need to do the, uh, I think, uh, cosine rule. So I just call the opposite side x squared is equal to the other two sides added together squared. So that's 2 squared plus root 6 squared minus 2 times root 6 cos of 75 degrees. Now, this, of course, is that. So we can put that in. So I'll put that in. Uh, let's just do a little bit of multiplication. That's 4 uh, root 6. That's going to be 4 plus 6 minus uh, 4 times root 6 and cos 75. Let's put it in as root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. Fours here will disappear for multiplying divided by four will go will cancel each other out. So you have ten here from the four plus six minus. Now it's root six times root six, which is going to be just six. And now minus root six times minus root two. So that's going to be plus anyway. And root six times root two is square root, square root of twelve. Okay, uh, put those together. That's four plus root 12, oops, 4 plus root 12, uh, which equals uh, uh, root 12, I could change to 4 plus 4 root 3, which equals 4 plus... Uh, how is it 4 root 3, sir? 2, uh, how is it 4 root 3? Uh, sorry, 2 root 3? Yep. Root 4 root 3 is what I meant to write there. Uh, why did I do that? No. It's 4 plus root 
plus 2 root 3, because it's root 4 root 3. Confused myself there. Okay, but that equals x squared, isn't it? Okay. Now, finally, perhaps, so I have x squared is equal to 4 plus 2 root 3, so I need to know what the square root of this is. And that's finally where the uh, start of the question makes sense. Why do they say 1 plus root 3 squared is 4 plus 2 root 3? So the square root of this is 1 plus root 3. So maybe so the square root of this will be the opposite to what you did at the start. And now the first part of the question makes sense why they asked that third expansion. So the answer is... 1 plus root 3 for full marks. And now let's have a little look. So, uh, I like it. Part A and B looks good. Part C, not fully simplified to finish. Didn't get the square root of it, uh, I don't think. Uh, the die. Part A looks good. Part B some incorrect use of surge to finish which affected part C and no who's that oh, I'm going to, have to figure out who's right yeah that was the die and then uh, Rigel part A and B are correct part C did you manage to get the square roots yes you did and parts all, all fully correct all right. so that was uh, yeah this part, part C it was a little bit tricky the way you had to deal with all the Swords and stuff, and just make sure all everything cancels out, and then linking part A to part C. All right, so let's have a little look at our uh, question four. So, uh, so if that's root two, that means well, one over cos x equals root two, which means that cos x would be the reciprocal one over root two. And then therefore, known, that's a known one, but that's root 2 over 2, so that's going to be pi over 4. Where is it positive? Where is, uh, so it's going to be this and this quadrant, so pi over 4 from this one, and this one is going to be 7 pi over 4, I think, when you take away pi over 4 here, 2 pi. So x is pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4 for that one. Okay, so do, do stop me if I'm going too fast, um, otherwise I'm just going to keep going. So that's going to be now, so the cosec x, we're going to change into sine, 1 over sine. So that's going to be root 3 cos x over sine x plus 1 is equal to 0. So this is looking like tan already, but it's uh, upside down. But um, uh, that's just rearranged, so it equals, oops, sine x equals, uh, so it's going to be um, minus 1 over root 3 when we rearrange this bit and then we can just uh, look at the reciprocals the reciprocal of that is going to be tan x <clears throat> and this is going to be minus uh, minus root 3 so it's cos over sine so sine over cos would be the other way around so it's root 3 over 1 now this is um, uh, one of our known ones so x will be uh, all right so we need to talk about uh, root 3 that would be I think pi over 3 is our reference, but we need to know where tan is negative. So tan is going to be negative here and here, I think, because of you know, sine and cos being negative. So uh, what's this angle here with a reference of pi over 3? Well, that'll be 2 pi over 3. And what is this one down here with a reference of pi over 3 here? So subtracting from 2 pi, you get 5 pi over 3. All right, so let's have a little look. Rigel's answer, you can both right. Uh, die. Um, you get attempt marks on both, but neither of them are right, of course, today. Sir, I don't remember if I wrote secant x as 1 over sine or 1 over cosine. You wrote as 1 over sine. No. <laughs> So you actually taught secant. So if you look at your answer here, and I hope you don't mind me showing it on screen. Yeah, you did one over sine for secant and one over sine for cosecant. So treat them as the same. Oops. Uh, you will be on the attempt, the attempt marks uh, train there because I think they're both uh, not 
quite right because you didn't you also took cos over sine to be the same as tan, not the inversion of tan. All right, so the second one, which maybe was a little, uh, was more difficult, not, not maybe, it just was. Um, so I want to get them all down to single angles, so we'll take this first. So I'm sine x cos x as our known identity for this. So if you did that step, maybe it would be a mark. I think. Um, okay, so all well, those issues here. Uh, and this can actually be factorized at this stage. Uh, so if I do 2 sine x cosine x, I do uh, 1 and 1. Hopefully you can see that if I multiplied this out and I did the right signs, a plus and a minus here to make the minus 1 at the end, 2 times that gives 2 sine x cos x. 2 times this uh, gives this minus 2 sine x. Uh, plus 1 times cos x gives the plus cos x. And plus 1 times minus 1 gives the minus 1. So this is uh, factorizable at this stage, which um, was the key to this. So perhaps I think if I just look and see if anyone actually do that. Uh, Malika, you would have gotten a temp mark, but you didn't go beyond this first line. I think there's this writing. Um, but I also the same attempt mark, but you didn't go beyond that line. Raja. Uh, I don't have to check your answer. You get perhaps you have two of the right answers, but you're missing because you didn't uh, factor fully. You're missing two. I'll show you. I think you get the cos x is equal to one answer, but you don't get this one, the method you did, because you divided by this. You ignored this sign part. You factored it out, but then you ignored it. Oh, uh, whoops. Okay, so then uh, this is going to be cos x is equal to one. This is sine x then is equal to negative a half. So cos x equals one. Well, you can talk about where that's going to sit and. It's going to be here, isn't it? Um, positive one, and how many times do we need? Oh, so it's just uh, one full circle, including two pi. So that's zero is one answer, and two pi is the next time it hits that point. Negative a half, then, is going to be our angle of um, uh, pi over six. So uh, negative a half, so where's sine negative a half? Well, it's in both these quadrants, because it's got to be. Y, so our reference is pi over 6 here. So that one will be 7 pi over 6. There's an answer here. 7 pi over 6. And here I think is 11 pi over 6. If you take away from 2 pi. So these are our answers. They're all answers, so you can probably put them in a row together. But these are four answers. So uh, right, so we got two of them, but not the other two. And the other two of you guys got attempt marks, but nothing more than that. All right, so. Question five, hopefully it was another straightforward question. This is um, uh, just reading off this graph. Where I wrote the answers. I need them. A, okay, so A will be, all right, so the amplitude has been um, doubled, but the it's also the opposite to the way it should be. Cos x would or should be up here if it was just doubled by 2 to start off with. So it's actually a is equal to negative 2, not 2. Because the minimum is now where the maximum should be, and the maximum is where the minimum should be. So it's negative 2. It's actually uh, reversed it. So a is equal to negative 2. Uh, the period of the function, if I can just read that off the graph. Where does it hit the same point again? It's just pi. If you want it, you could work it out if you want. Uh, and the value of b then, the value would be, well, you can use the formula or you can just think, well, they fit, they fitted two periods in where they normally would fit one, so that means b would be two. Or you can just use your uh, two pi over b formula uh, to get two. Either way is fine. 
Uh, Rigel, you didn't get the negative two. You just got two. Uh, but they got the other two raised. And um, Dai, you did the exact same thing. And Malaika uh, got it all raised. Okay, so moving on to question six. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh man, oh man, this was a, a doozy. Uh, let's see. Your answers, like a, a decent attempt, but not quite. You'll get a few, a couple of attempt marks. Uh, but I, you didn't fancy it, and I wouldn't blame you. I would have left it to the last as well. Rigel. Um, I'll have to look at that. I feel like you made it fit rather than you actually got it to fit. I'll have to look at your work here. Okay, so let's look at how you would uh, try this. Surface. All right, so this is going to be. I'll try and keep it nice and neat. All right, so oh, I, uh, you would get an attempt marked if you just um, notice that this. Uh, as a solution, you can just then, if you're looking to verify that this is a solution, so that'll be sine pi over eight, cosine pi over eight, if you want to verify that, and therefore you've got these third values for that, and you can put them in. So that'll be first step. So that's root two minus one, which is this bit, all over. So that's going to be sine pi over eight now, because you're verifying. So that's this bit. Uh, root two minus root two plus um, the same thing over this side because that is a half root 2 plus root 2 and that equals wow the, the fourth root of 8 okay interesting okay so um, I want this side to look like this that's, that's my plan and oof, to do that I think I see that you guys were working on common denominators and stuff. Um, I did that first as well, and I went, oh, that's that's nasty. Just multiplying uh, with the double square roots here is pretty nasty stuff. Um, yeah, so I didn't know how to rationalize with like the square root inside the square root, so I just got confused. Yeah, you wouldn't have done a question like that before, and that's why it, I would have thought that that's at my at that stage. I went, no, this is this is obviously not where we're going with this. And um, I'm noticing the similarity between this and this and this and this. And going, is there a way of simplifying this down? Because they're quite simple, or they're quite similar, the numerator and denominators of both these fractions. So that's what I try to make. Yeah, I try to make this denominator the same as this numerator, and then hopefully they would cancel out. So I factored out root two out of the bottom here. So I'm just going to do that over here as a bit of a sidebar. Um, so half two minus root two. Factor out root two out of both these terms and keep it still under the square root. So I'm factoring out the square root of two. What's left behind? Well, root two times what will give me that two. So that's going to be root two minus uh, well, root 2 times what gives it that root 2? It's just 1. Okay. And you can do the same thing over here. Okay, so I'm going to do that uh, as our denominator. So the numerator will not change. Square root, root 2 minus 1, all over a half. And I'm going to replace it with this factored out. Root 2 times root 2 minus 1. You can see why I did that now, because... That looks a bit more like that. Same happened over this side. Factored out square root of 2 from just the denominator. So this is a, a number question, really. A thirds application of thirds and indices, uh, as you'll see in a second. So this is actually root 2 plus 1 as well. All right, not quite. Not quite a stage cancelled, but I can just get this root 2 the root 2 of root 2 is the fourth root of 2. It'll be 2 to the half times a half. 
so I can get that out of there. So I know I'm rewriting this a number of times, but hopefully it just it'll make it a little bit clearer. So that if I want to squeeze that out, it's going to be the fourth root of two, and then all of a sudden the fourth root of two divided by that half times well, what's left behind? Root two minus one. And now I can see that this and this is the same. That bit and that bit is the same. And therefore, it is just it over it, and that will cancel out. Okay, and that's going to happen over here as well. well I'm not going to write it, so I'm just going to write 1 over... Uh, the exact same thing happens, you take out the thing, and you're going to get 1 over uh, the fourth root of 2 over 2. Okay, and this is also 1 over, for the same reason. All right, now we're getting closer. Okay, let's, so it's, if, it, if it's one over, let's look at the, the tidying up of that or the simplifying of that. Oh, yes, uh, so it's going to be two over four root of two plus two over the fourth root of two. And then all of a sudden, well, you can hopefully see that that's going to be uh, four over the fourth root of two. Now, my whole thing is to get that to equal two to the power of all right, no, sorry, fourth root of eight. So I'm not quite there yet. And, uh, well, if I have a third on the denominator, I can move it up by multiplying by its, um, by something. Uh, I'm actually gonna multiply it by, because I want the fourth root of eight in the answer, so I'm gonna multiply it by the fourth root of eight and below. Okay, um, well the numerator is okay because it's just going to be four times the fourth root of eight and I really want this denominator to be two because then it will be the same as this. So is it? Well let's just take it for a little sidebar and we do it up here as well. So it's just the fourth root of two Multiply by the fourth root of eight. All right, that is two to the power of a quarter. Multiplied by well, eight is two to the power of three, so that's two to the power of three quarters. And when we multiply, we add the powers. So that's a quarter plus three quarters. That's one. So it's two to the power of one, which is two. Which is exactly what I wanted. And two goes into that twice, so we are left with. Two. That is equal to 2 to the fourth root of 8, which of course equals left hand side equals right hand side. Sir? Yes. Um, what is that process called when you multiply a fraction with two same integers? Uh, well, you can, well, if you want to call it with thirds, it's called rationalizing the denominator, turning the denominator into a uh, integer. Oh. There's, there's no specific terminology for that? Well, it's just multiple. It's what we call it, equivalent fraction, if you want. Uh, so it's the same as, what is a half? Well, if I multiply it by 4 over 4, it's also 4 over 8. So it's equivalent fractions, I suppose, if that's what you do. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. All right, so with that in mind, I'm not going to do part B. I'm going to let you suffer it out with part B, and I'll show you how to do it on Wednesday if you can. I will give a hint, though. Um, you want to do something, you want to multiply. So part B, if we just look at it here, hence find the other solution to the equation. So when x doesn't equal pi over 8, so this is, it. This is an also, so for part B, uh, x will not equal pi over 8. So, um, so you're going to have to, to solve this. So in order to do that, you have the right-hand side looking like it is, and then you have the left-hand side uh, is equal to uh, 2 to the fourth root of 8. So that's, if you look at this question, that left-hand side is... Oh, sorry, the right-hand side is... Left-hand side, keep the same for the moment. What I want to do is multiply this by something, and this is what you have to figure out. 
So it turns into an integer. And if I multiply that side, I must multiply this side as well. So if I multiply these by something, and I want to make them look like this, because I know sine pi over 8 and cosine pi over 8 would be that and that. And that is my hint. So recap, multiply this by something to make it an integer. Now, if you want, do what I did. It's 2 times the fourth root of 8. So the fourth root of 8 would be 2 to the power of 3 quarters. How do I turn that into an integer? And that's what you need to think about. So that is your first piece of homework for Wednesday. Redo question 6B. Um, it's because nobody got it in the exam. Okay. Uh, do I have a final answer that you can refer to? <sighs> Final answers, just to see if you're on the right track, is going to be um, 7 pi over 24. Okay, so 7 pi over 24 is what you're trying to get as your final answer. So see, can anyone get 7 pi over 24? And if you can't do it, I will do it on, um, on Wednesday for you guys. Okay, so let's move along. We're looking at question uh, 7. And this is uh, starting on the calculator uh, section. All right. So question seven uh, is find B, C. So, okay, so that's uh, X here. So you want to find this lens. So this over this, this over this, that looks like a sine rule to me. And, and uh, hopefully you recognize that. And over sine 38 is equal to uh, 14 over sine 115. And you can work Presuming you can work that down, you should get 9.51 as your length for, for BC. I'll check whether you did or not in a second. For part B then, the area, is part D. The part B, the area of the triangle then, um, well, you need, uh, because you have these two sides, you're gonna need this angle if you wanna do a half A, B, sine C. So uh, you need the angle in between. So I think that angle up there is 27 when you do some subtraction. And then you would do a half, 14 times 9.51, which you just found, uh, times sine 27. So that's a half AB sine C for that. Work that out and you get 30.2 centimeters squared to uh, three significant figures. So let's see, did you get off to a good start in the calculator section? So let's uh, meet up Rigels, you've got to write. Um, die. You got it right, both parts. Um, like a, uh, you got it right as well, both parts. Okay, sweet. All right, so let's move along to question eight. So this one, perhaps read a bit uh, harder than it might have been in principle. Um, So the perimeter, um, well, it's just three, it was three arcs, wasn't it? So there was, this is the, um, this is the center of, of the circle with this arc, isn't it? And there's something like that uh, over here, and that's the center of that. So it's just gonna be three, uh, three arcs. So the angle was, so the length of the arc is gonna be, well, the angle was pi on three, wasn't it? Because it's an equilateral triangle, pi on three. Uh, times the, I think they gave you something, yeah, six. So this six um, would have to be then the radius of the circle, so that would be times six times, and there's three of those arcs, so if you just multiply by three, they're all identical, working all that out, and I think you get six pi. Let's see this, how do we get on with that first part? Oh, uh, you did it in decimal form in about 18, yeah, looks correct and like it for the first part. Uh, but I only went to degrees. Uh, two, six, oh, uh, something's gone wrong there. I think I, I did the perimeter of the triangle on the inside and not the whole thing. 
I think. Um, like, uh, what do you do? Three arcs. No, you're okay. Oh. No, you work out an arc and then multiply by three. Yeah, that's fine for part A. And for part A as well. Uh, the area of one second. Yeah, okay. Uh, Riser, you, you got part A as well. So let's look at part B. Um, which was more difficult. Um, part B, you should have got around 25.4, and right, well, you did get that, so you have it. Um, uh, did I? No, you didn't guess, but some of it's correct. And uh, I'm liking you did get it. Okay, so very quickly to go through it, uh, that area would be, well, it's the area of isn't it? Three sectors take away the area of two of these triangles because uh, you would include those in the sectors, which only want to include it once because it's not three of them. So hopefully that makes sense. And I think uh, you guys got that hang of that. So the area then would be a half uh, pi on three times uh, six squared. So that's the area. And if I multiply that by uh, three, that would be the three sectors. And then if I do a half, so what's the area of the triangle? Uh, a, B, sine C again, six times six uh, sine pi over three. And I want to take that away twice. So I'm going to multiply it by two. So I multiply it by two at the end here. So three sectors minus two triangles would be the area in total. I don't the understand what triangle um, we're subtracting. This one. So if you think about it, what you're going to, when you get the area of the sector, oh, that's a terrible diagram, but anyway, when you get the area of the sector, it includes the triangle. Yeah. And if you get the area of all three sectors, uh, what you've got is that you've included that triangle three times. Whereas you don't want to include it three times, you just want to include it once and then get the little areas here, so. Right. So you need to subtract it twice to get the area of the triangle. And the triangle is then an equilateral, so it's six times six, uh, and the angle would be 60 degrees in an equilateral triangle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, so question nine. Okay, so this was... Uh, Oh, they didn't give you a diagram, just find all the interior angles given three lengths and calculate your answers to um, one less of a place. Uh, you can sketch this um, if you want. A, B, C. And A, B then, 5, B, C is oh, 14, okay, that's a terrible sketch then. And A, C is 11. Okay, so that means uh, this angle is going to be the biggest angle here at A. Uh, C is going to be the smallest, and B should be the one in between. All right, so I'll find A first. So cos of A, and this is going to use the cosine rule, but finding the angle. So it's 5 squared plus 11 squared. So you can take this from your former booklet. All over this minus this. So it's 2 times 5 times 11. I actually didn't give it a negative. And that would be expected because, of course, it is. A, I'm expecting it to be, well, close to an obtuse angle, if not an obtuse angle. And it is an obtuse angle. And you just do cos inverse and you get 117 uh, to the nearest degree. Okay. And then once you have that, you can use the sine rule if you want, or you can use the cosine rule again to find the other two. Uh, let's just check to see how you got on with the answers. Who's this? This is for dice. So you got it right. All of it right. Uh, like that. Uh, you got it all right as well. Interesting rounding. Give your answers in degrees to one decimal place. You managed to give two decimal places. I'm going to check the mark scheme to see if that's going to be a mark off. I think it might be, I'm afraid. And Rigel, uh, you have it right. So that's a nice five marks. Okay, so you're all doing reasonably okay, I think, so far. Some right, some wrong. And then we come to this last question. Yes. Then we come to our old friend, 
farmer Edward who owns a triangular field. All right. So, uh, but I, you left this one to the end as well, wisely, but didn't quite get to it. Malaika, uh, oh, not quite. Sir, I, instead of doing a sector, I did like a smaller triangle and I was like using like scale factor. I don't know what I was doing, sir. Yeah, yeah, finding scale factor was an interesting way to go about this. Um, right, Joe. Yeah, so we talked about this. Uh, yeah, I think I drew my um, triangle with the sector wrong. Yeah, for the second part. I didn't do it so, wrong, so. Yeah, so for part A, you got it though. Okay, yeah, but let's look at part A anyway. And yes, part B will be your other, uh, part B and C then will be your, well, C you should be able to get, hopefully. Uh, part B is going to be your other homework, but I'll give you a hint on it as well. All right. So given the rope, so this requires a sketch. The first sketch, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So we have a field size 15. 15 and 15 root 2, okay, and he attaches a rope, and so this first diagram is this, and that won't, it's going to be, this length here is 10, and uh, well, that's an if, uh, given the rope is 10 meters long, calculate the percentage of the field is, uh, that he's able uh, to graze, okay, yeah, so and that means this bit won't be able, he won't make it that far. Poor Gertie, he only gets this bit. All right, so what percentage is that then? Well, that's an arc, isn't it? So the total area of the field will be a half, uh, well, 15 times 15, won't it? Because it's just a right angle triangle, which is very useful. So the area of the field then is 112.5 meters squared. Okay. Uh, then uh, we need the area of the sector, so that'll be, uh, so that's that sector that's in white, and that's going to be a half, well, 10 squared, because that would be its radius, uh, and the angle is pi on 2, or 90 degrees you put in, so pi on 2. Um, and, uh, so that's going to give 25 pi. It's equivalent in decimals. So to get the, the the percentage then, of course, you know how to do this, but 25 pi then divided by 112.5 and then multiply by 100 over 1 if you want, and you get uh, the nearest percentage. It's 70%. So that first part should have been doable. Um, the second part is the part I'm going to give you a hint on, and hopefully you guys can finish it. All right, so the hint was, first of all, I'll help with the diagram, so I'll draw quite a large diagram here. Let's try and make it pretty accurate. Okay, so I think I drew something similar to this on the board um, the last day. Comes out here, comes back in here, and there's a bit outside. We don't really care about the bit outside. This will be out, so we're looking for this area then. This area has to be in terms of, uh, yeah, it says in the question what I need to get it to. I'm sure the B satisfies this thing. Okay. All right, so this is your diagram. Now, my hints are for the diagram. If I draw a line from here, uh, bisecting the angle and bisecting the side over here, this is going to be a right angle. This is going to be a right angle. Okay. Uh, sorry, Mr. Gibson distracted me. Um, okay, that's a good start. And then we split up. Uh, well, you can you can talk about this in general. Uh, so let's call this point uh, O A. I call, I call this E, I call this C, okay, um, 
So looking at this, then what I've created is um, half, I've half this length. So this is going to be 15 root 2 over 2, and this length here is going to be 15 root 2 over 2. And then what I'm going to do is create more, I'm going to try and split it up into areas that I can get the uh, known bits and get areas. So if I make a sector out of the bit here, and of course this length here is, it's not going to be the length of the rope, which they're talking about. Uh, so this will be B. And this will be B, I think. Okay, so uh, we're getting somewhere. And uh, the other thing, the other hint that I would give you is for the uh, angle you need to talk about, well, it's going to be, call this one here, theta. So we'll call that one and this one will also be theta. Uh, and the last bit, that uh, hint I'm going to give is that this length would, because you split this into 45 degrees, because you split it in two, this angle here, the, the whole angle, that's going to be 45 degrees, and that's 90 degrees. And this is 45 degrees as well down here in this triangle. This, uh, perhaps I'll highlight that so you can see the triangle I'm talking about. This larger triangle here. So if I have that, uh, that means I know that this OC length is also the same as 15 root 2 over 2. Now we can see that 15 root 2 over 2 comes up in the answer. Now, what you need to find is put all these areas together. Can you get the areas of the two sectors and the areas of these two triangles including B and uh, see will it satisfy that equation as uh, said so because you know the area of the field is 90% uh, that's the question 90% of the field so that's quite easy to get the 90% here on that side so there is my hint diagram and I'd like you to try again to do part B and try and get that all to work out um, left hand side of okay. so right hand side okay any questions on that and therefore do part C you can just use the, your uh, uh, calculator for part C yeah that makes a lot more sense okay cool all right so your homework which I'll put on manage back and I'll put uh, the, the exam is there anyway your homework is question 10 parts b and c and question was it question six i think just to make sure of the right question six part b now i'll put this video up when it finishes processing and you can look at my hints again if you want um, uh, and i'll just stay on the line here and i can leave that diagram up if you're taking it down any questions no, I don't think